So number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're going to feel a little queasy. That's okay, right? Today, tomorrow, whatever. Number three, if you feel like, man, maybe I don't belong in this group, I want to tell you that you do belong in this group. The resistance is good, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So let's talk about why you're here. You're here to grow your fitness business. You're here to grow your boot camp, personal training, uh, CrossFit, whatever it is that you're running. You're helping people. You want more people to help. Am I right? And so to do this, you've got to learn how to market. To do this, you've got to learn how to close better. You've got to have better systems because you are here with problems. Problems of how do I get more clients, problems with how do I increase my profit margins, problems with how do I hire more staff, problems with how do I keep clients, problems with how do I get referrals from clients, problems with what do I do with the fucking competitors that are showing up, right? Now, when you come back 90 days from now, you're going to come back with newer problems. See, we're not going to solve your problems in this mastermind. We're just giving you newer problems. Do you understand? But they go, they go from third world problems to first world problems. Third world problems is, man, I'm working my ass off, but I'm not taking any money home. Right? And then first world problems become, man, I'm making all this money. I got to hire more trainers because I'm starting to burn out. I'll take that problem over the problem of not making any money, but working in the grind and seeing no light at the end of the tunnel. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So I don't want to paint some rosy picture that you're not going to have problems. 12 months from now, 24 months from now, 36 months from now, you're going to have more problems. They're better problems to have. I love the problems that I have today than I did the problems 13, 14, 15 years ago in the back of the Toyota pickup, right? Not a great place to live. So that's what you're here for. But there's a state of mediocrity that everybody seems to live in, and the people around us seem to encourage, propagate, and share. And that state is this. The state is, ah, I just want to live a comfortable life. I just want to make enough money with my fitness business to have a comfortable life. Really? What's a comfortable life? Do you know what inflation is going to be five years from now, ten years from now? Do you know what the cost of living, homes, are going to be? Do you know if you're going to get sick, if you're going to get married, your kids are going to get sick, need medical attention, special schools? What's going to happen? Do you know how much competition you're going to get? Where our industry is changing? Do you know where the stock market is headed? We don't, right? Those are all the unpredictables. And so what you really want to do is go, cool, I want to live a comfortable living. Well, what do you think a comfortable living might be? Someone throw out a number. How much money a year, gross revenue, would you have to make to have a comfortable living? 10 million. 400,000, someone said? I'm with the 10 million. Because you can't go wrong. Because if you have a little money left over, guess what you do? You donate it to your favorite charity. You leave it behind for your kids, right? That's exactly it. And so this book that Josh Carter turned me on to that I just gave two people a copy of, and I think all of you should get, Grant Cardone's 10X Rule. Get it and read it. Don't just be part of the 82% who never get past the first chapter, right? We are not in a room of mediocre people anymore. Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone, 10X rule. You have to 10X the shit out of everything in your life. Everything, from relationships to business, to your health. You're in the fitness industry, you don't look like a trainer, go look like a trainer. So we're done with trying to live a comfortable life. We can't be in this state of... Well, I don't want to get too greedy. I don't want to think too big. You know, gee, I'm going to leave some for everybody else. There's plenty for everybody else who wants it, who wants to go out and get it, right? And see, that's the thing. Whatever your state is, is where your, where your body and your finances and your health follows. If your state, mental state, is in a negative place, I guarantee that your body, your physiology, your finances, your mindset is going to follow. So you got to change that state if you want to change the outcome of your health, of your being, of your finances, of your wealth. So you can't say, I don't want to think greedy. Be greedy. If you have a great product, be greedy and make sure that every single person in your community is using your product if you truly feel you've got a better product than the guy across town. Right? Then be greedy. Well, what if I fail? What if I make a fool of myself? So? So? And then what? What if you don't? And now you're just part of the sea of mediocrity. Who gives a shit? 
yeah, but competition is good, it's healthy. It is. No, it's not. No, it's not. Guess who's your competition? Someone yell out, who's your competition? Laziness. Laziness. Yeah, what else? Orange theory, sure. <laughs> Some in here might even yell out, a fit body boot camp. <laughs> right? But it's McDonald's. It's laziness. It's Orange Theory. It's Fit Body Boot Camp. It's the CrossFit. It's the other trainer with his own brand. It's the lap band. It's the Weight Watchers. It's the Lindora. Now, who believes that they truly can deliver the best results and customer service, client service, better than anybody in their community? Then you should stay awake at night stressing out for losing one single person to your competitor and figuring out what the hell you have to do to get that person into your facility. Because here you are, allowing good people to go to bad trainers, right? Like, that's what I do in this industry. This is one of five masterminds. We've got 87 or 82 members in it. It's going to keep growing because I can't allow one single fitness professional to go to any of the other guys. I've got nothing against them, nothing against them, but they are not as good as me. They won't motivate like I will. They won't stay awake for you at nights. They don't have access to the people that I have access to who can teach you the things that they can teach you to get more clients, have a better life, and build better systems. They don't. They simply don't. I know that. So I've got a right to crush them, to dominate them, to destroy them, to make them want to go and look for a job at McDonald's and leave this fucking industry. That's how you have to think. That's how you have to think. This is my industry. You guys are my clients. I want to protect you, right? because I didn't have that when I was coming up in the industry. You got to operate that way. Yeah, but I need money to make money and I don't have money to make money. No, you don't. You need hustle to make money. You need creativity to make money. You need imagination to make money. You need balls to make money. You don't need money to make money. I promise you that. You can set up a free WordPress blog. Facebook is free. You got a shopping cart called PayPal that's free that you can drive traffic to and collect money. You got a park outside that you can run boot camps at that's free. What else do you need that's free? The air you're breathing is free. It doesn't take money to make money. But I don't have the same advantages as the successful people do. You should thrive on disadvantage. You should thrive on disadvantage. Be the underdog. Root for yourself. Bet on yourself. One of my coaching clients, his name is Jason Capital. His real name is Alex Morocco. Private coaching client. Pays me a ton of money to sit with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis every 90 days. Too arrogant, too cocky, too full of himself to come and sit in a mastermind like this. And I love that about him. I got six clients who pay me a lot of, uh, six, seven, eight, nine clients now who pay me a lot of money like that to sit with me one-on-one -on -one versus sitting in a mastermind. And I make it such an obscene amount of money that... It'll be worth my time and make me excited to sit with them, right? Yet they keep coming, which is great. And Alex has a saying, or Jason Capital has a saying, that I bet on myself. You got to bet on yourself. There's no man on the white horse who's going to swoop in and save the day. See, there was a time when our own industry here, that some cats were thinking like they're the man on the white horse, they're the badasses, and they're going to come in and save the day. Listen, I'm just a conduit to information. That's it. I've taken more risks. I wasted more money in this industry, and so I've learned faster what works and what doesn't. I'm no man on the white horse. You are. You're the man or the woman on the white horse. Cable's not. Josh is not. Samantha's not. We just have the information because Josh sat there in front of his computer on Facebook all day long. I sat there and I rewrote almost all of Gary Halbert's copies by hand over and over again, and I figured out why each sentence leads to the next sentence. I understand copywriting offer emotional triggers better than anybody else. I'm not the man on the white horse. I'm just going to teach you that. You can learn it and not use it and be broke, or you can use it and be wealthy. Use it, be broke. How? Because the first time you use it, you're not going to be successful. You're not. I can't tell you how many businesses I've shut down. You just see my successful ones. I failed plenty of times. And that's just in this little niche. Never mind what I did as a trainer. You ought to see all the wacky stuff I did that failed miserably. So you got to change that state of mind, right? We're going to get out of this mediocre state of mind that society, the community, the families have taught us to live in because we have to live humble. Hey, live humble, man. Live humble. 
I'm all about living humble, but don't live stupid. So what is that state of mind that we want to live in? Well, you got to understand, you live on a planet where everything is underestimated, right? Like I told you earlier, cost of living is underestimated. How much money you need is grossly underestimated. Walk into Walmart, any Walmart on this planet, and look at the old folks like your grandparents who should not be working there, who are working there because they underestimated how much money they needed, right? They don't want to be working at Walmart. They have to be working at Walmart. And that's sad, it's unfortunate. So don't underestimate anything. And on this planet, we just underestimate, we just want to live a comfortable life because we just base it on today's economy, today's revenue. How do we know some idiots aren't gonna smash some airplanes into another building and spiral this whole economy down the shitter again? You don't know that. So you gotta plan for it. And the answer is to 10X everything, 10 million a year, that's it. And next year you should shoot for 20 million a year. You may not hit 10 or 20 million, but you're gonna hit a much higher number than you planned on hitting if you just go for, I just wanna make another 100,000. All that is, another 100,000 is $8,333 a month more, guys. I can sell one person a month on a $9,000 personal training package. 12 people a year, and I just added 100,000. That's nothing, nothing. You gotta think big. $100,000 more is nothing. And I know the secondary conversation in some of your heads right now. Fuck you, easy enough for you to say that. <laughs> I'm not even making 100,000. Change your state, we'll help you change your state. Hang around here long enough, I promise you we will. So don't be a part of that sea of mediocrity and of averages, right? Be above average. Don't rely on hope and chance to make it. Hope and chance aren't gonna get you there, man. You gotta plan for success and prepare to succeed. That's it. Don't be that guy or gal that leaves here with your marching orders for the next 90 or 100 days before we meet up again in San Diego, but only start taking action the last 20 days before our next mastermind. We know who you are because all of a sudden you come to life on the Facebook group. You come to life on the emails. And all of a sudden you start setting up coaching calls. We don't think any less of you. In fact, we were sitting here quietly rooting for you. But what if, just what if, you could be that guy that leaves or gal that leaves today and before dinner takes one thing and puts it into action. And before you get on a plane tomorrow night or Sunday morning, puts two more things into action. And every day you do something towards your success, one big thing a day versus waiting a week or two before the next mastermind. That's not planning for success, that's planning for failure. You gotta get obsessed with your goals, right? You gotta fire anyone out of your life, anyone out of your life who doesn't support, motivate, or inspire you to reach your goals. You just gotta get rid of those people because your income is truly the sum of the five people you hang out with most. So what we're trying to do with the Facebook group, with the monthly webinars that I'm gonna do, with these masterminds, is change your circle of influence, right? While I can't take away the people, the crabs that you hang out with, if I can put more positive people into your life, your income will rise via osmosis. But the rest is effort on your part. So you gotta keep changing that state. Your new state of mind is this. You have to thrive off being disadvantaged. Thrive off being the underdog, right? You gotta welcome the suck factor. Guess what, I woke up to the suck factor this morning, didn't I? I spent a lot of money on Facebook. I woke up to the suck factor this morning when they're like, hey, sorry, we disabled your Facebook ad account. That's happened to me with Google before. Hey, guess what, ptpower.com is now sandboxed. They're on the very last page of Google. Congratulations. Gee, thanks, right? but that's okay, I thrive off the suck factor. I expect it, and so I prepare for it. So what did I do? I called up Grant, not Grant Cardone, but there's another gentleman named Grant who buys ads for me on Facebook or on, uh, on uh, Google. I said, Grant, guess what? The money that I'm spending right now on Facebook, we're gonna move over to Google. He said, why, what happened? I said, I just got shut down this morning. So until we can get Facebook open, spend that money on Google, gave me the same number of leads because my business will not stop no matter what. It's not Google dependent, Yahoo dependent, Facebook dependent. The internet blows up, guess who's knocking on every personal trainer's door? Hi, how are you, I'm Pedro Esculian. I'm not here to sell you the Bible. I'm here to sell you 
a better life. And understand this, that your goals, my goals, have been greatly influenced by our upbringing. By the circumstances you've seen, by the family members around you, by the teachers who have influenced you. And their goals, their vision on life, their perspective on things have been greatly influenced by the people who raised them. And you go back far enough, and they were influenced by people who came out of the Great Depression. Where nothing was available. Opportunity was missing. And so if we allow ourselves to get programmed by those people, I'm not saying they're bad, I'm just saying you have to realize that. See, in my family, all I ever heard growing up, because we came from a foreign country into the United States from a communist country that was very oppressive, all I heard was, we're running out of money before we run out of month. Not a good feeling at all. And when you hear that enough, your brain starts thinking, I'm gonna grow up never having enough money to fulfill the needs and wants that I have. And so unless I change that pattern, that negative loop in my head, I can't attract the wealth, I can't get the 82 people in a room, I can't get 700 people in a room. So the state had to change. Oh wait, my parents came from that. But they brought me to a country where the opportunities are better, they're greater. And I have access to information that if I just take action on, I can 10x my life. So we talked about this, if competition is healthy, then domination is immunity. This is not a line that I made up, this is a line from Grant Cardone. If competition is healthy, then domination is Im immunity. Dominate your competition, crush them, and put them out of business. Yeah, but what if, how are they going to live? How are they going to pay their mortgage? How are they going to feed their family? Hire them. Hire them. <laughs> Hire them is one option. They can go get a job somewhere is another option. Or they can attempt, because it's free enterprise, to be better than you. Right? And that's better for everyone. And that's better for everyone. And that leads me to my last point, which isn't this one right here. Because you have to live urgently. You have to live like someone's coming to take your business away from you. I operate from a place that there's someone scheming exactly. Like they have a big marker board like the one behind me here. And it says, how do I dominate Fit Body Boot Camp? And there's like all these little, looks like football schematics on their plan to crush Fit Body Boot Camp. I operate out of that state. How in the world is that ever going to happen when I operate out of that state? You got to live urgently. You got to live like someone's trying to take it away from you, man. And then make a game out of it. It becomes a game becomes a game. Which leads me to the last and final point here, which is money doesn't care. It doesn't care about your color, your ethnicity, your gender, your socioeconomic status, where you live, where you came from. Money doesn't care. It doesn't care. Money, it has no master. It'll reward, reward the doers and action takers, and it'll punish the losers. That's all it does, right? People who are all talk, no action, Money will decide what happens to them. People who take action, money magically shows up to them. They didn't get lucky. They weren't fortunate. They weren't right place, right time. I love all those sayings that the mediocre, the sea of mediocrity has come up with to justify, oh, this person was the right place at the right time. Oh, they had money to make money. Oh, he comes from a rich bloodline. Fuck you. I hustle. Right? You hustle. So what do we do next? What do we do next in this group? We get involved, we stay active. We don't just sit on the bleachers, we get on the field and we play. Just 12 months, doing a 12 month stint in here doesn't get you there. Being active. Don't try and be the gray man, the gray woman. In the military, the gray man, the gray woman in the boot camps are the ones who try and kind of hide out. They're not in the front of the pack, they're not behind the pack. They're right in the middle of the pack in the boot camp for the 12 weeks. Why? They just want to blend in and get through. Don't be the gray man. Don't be the gray woman. Get involved. Be active. Ask stupid questions. And then stay involved, right? Because the going is going to get tough. The suck factor is going to happen. You're going to wake up to bad news. Employees never wake up to bad news, by the way. 
They just get one piece of bad news at the end, the pink slip, when they were least expecting it. And they're always two weeks away from bankruptcy. That's a national statistic, by the way. 93% of all employees, no matter their level on the food chain, are two paychecks away from bankruptcy. See, they don't grind their teeth at night like you will. They don't. They don't, they don't toss and turn. They don't go, holy shit, I've got payroll to be in charge of. That's a great responsibility. I've got clients whose health depend upon me. I've got taxes to pay. Lump taxes, right? See, their taxes, they're, the government says, you're so irresponsible, I'm going to take money out before you get your check. I've been an employee, I know that. But as an employer, as an entrepreneur, they go, hey, here's the money. We're going to trust it every quarter. You're going to write a big fat check. That's a really cool responsibility to have. Yeah. But you could also screw that up. There's people in this very room who screwed that up in the beginning. And we had to come up with a really big sale very quickly <laughs> to produce a lot of money out of thin air. Yeah. That's a true story. You can take that to the bank. So you got to embrace the suck factor, welcome it, and just know that that is the resistance against our muscles, against our mental muscles, the suck factor, the adversity, the challenges, the people telling you you can't do it. Where's Mitra? Raise your hand, Mitra. But that's not me. I'm on Team Mitra. When I was saying you can't do it, it was more like you shouldn't do it because it was advice to not do it. You understand that, right? I do. It's not a challenge to try and prove me wrong. I got it. All right. <laughs> Because she will mess you up, man. Mitra will mess you up. You tell her she can't do something, she will get it done. Problem is, she'll do it at the expense of everything else in her life. <laughs> so you got to welcome that resistance. Because the more resistance you have against your body and your muscles, it grows. The more resistance you have against your business, against your mindset, against your personality, against your will to survive, you get stronger. You need to become a weed, not an orchid. An orchid is very fragile. Not enough water, just too much sun, not enough sun. A little, little humidity and the orchid dies. The weed thrives. Roundup cannot figure out how to create a chemical that kills weeds. I mean, folks, we have acid. We've got gasoline. They've tried it all. They can't figure out how to create a chemical that kills weeds permanently. It'll grow in asphalt, concrete, ice, snow, the desert. It'll grow out of tree trunks. It'll grow out of rocks, out of stucco, out of paint. It'll grow without any dirt. You ever pull a weed out of a crack and it just came right out? And it's the, 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 the root's just hanging there? It'll grow in your hand. You gotta be a weed, man. You gotta thrive, you gotta survive. But then you gotta go, what if happens if a cockroach made sweet love to a weed? <laughs> what happened? Everyone ever see Wally? If you got kids, you've seen Wally, right? Wally! Right? The entire planet Earth is all screwed up. They got all these obese people in cruise ships orbiting the, the, the planet because the world is just dead. And it's just Wally, this little robot, just putting away garbage. And one cockroach, his little pet cockroach, has survived the, the nuclear holocaust. So, what if a cockroach and a weed made sweet love? I'm the outcome of that. <laughs> you are the outcome of that, right? Be a cockroach, be a weed. I don't want to be an orchid. And you got to set 10x goals, man. 100,000 is not enough. Let's set a million dollar goal. If you have yet to make your $100,000 in here yet, your goal is $1 million. So what do you do? You don't go, how many leads do I need to make $100,000? You go, how many leads do I need to get from Facebook, from referral marketing, from direct mail, from lunch and learns, so that I can have enough leads to sit in front of for my set show close percentages to close enough people to earn a million dollars? That's $83,333 a month, by the way. Have you done that math? $83,333 a month is a million dollars a year. See, if you start generating leads like you're trying to make a million dollars, you're trying to sit in front of enough people to close because you're trying to make a million dollars. You will not make a million dollars. You'll come pretty damn close to $800,000. Tell you that. Won't that feel good? Mm-hmm. You got to work urgently, like someone's trying to take it away from you. 
You got to work urgently. And when you do, the money's going to come. The success is going to come. The big aha moments are going to come. The confidence will be built. And then you're going to do one last thing. And I believe this is the glue that holds it all together. Because if you don't do this one last thing, guess what happens? You lose it all. Success isn't the person who got rich and lost it. They weren't successful. They were foolish. We all know people like that. Lottery winners, dudes in and out of our industry, every industry. That's not successful. That was foolish. Success is the guy or gal that gets it, keeps it, and then does one last thing. Pays it forward. Teaches others. You got to reach back and pull the people up. I'm so fortunate that my top coaching clients are also now my friends and business partners. Samantha Taylor, Cable, Josh Carter, Jeff Sherman, Craig Ballantyne, all clients at one point, now business partners. And how awesome is it that right before I tuck myself into bed, in my janky little bed, I got this really crummy, crummy, crummy room here, which is funny because then Rob and Drew got the penthouse. <laughs> but anyway, that's fine. I just need to sleep, wake up, and teach. But as I'm tucking myself into bed, I get a text message. And let me just tell you guys what that text message was. And it warmed my cockles. You bring more joy and prosperity to the people, to, uh, in people's lives than anyone I know. Sweet dreams. Who do you think that came from? Diana. <laughs> if you said Diana, you're wrong. Yeah. It was Josh Carter. Thank you so much for that. It meant a lot. Yeah. <laughs> How sweet. Right? Yeah. Someone's like Craig. Craig is, is too emotionally constipated to say that. My goal, <laughs> my goal is to get Craig to say that. Although recently he said I love you to me and I was just, I almost, I fell into tears. Yeah. Guys, do you have any questions about what I shared here, what we talked about before we get started? Does all this make sense to you? All right, awesome. So we're going to take a five-minute break. Samantha's going to come up and set up her computer, and we'll get going. Thank you.